Hello, I'm Sheriff T-Bone Slim Yankum, and this is my town, Summit, Missouri. As a matter of fact, there I am, way down at the end of the street, waving at you. <laughs> well, it's too far away for you to see me. <laughs> uh, anyway, ours is a peaceful kind of town where the old and the new get along real harmonious like. Look us over. <laughs> it's uh, it's me again. <laughs> uh, uh, recently, Summit went through an experience we found both interesting and enlightening. Uh, we thought we'd share this splendid adventure with all of you. So pull up a chair, sit back, and join us for a story that we call The Ransom of Red Chief. your eyes upon it, William. An ever-changing world. One rampant with possibilities. This new world will be shaped by men of ideas, Bill. Men like us. Now that we're the proud owners of the beefsteak mine, we'll accrue power, fortune, and most importantly, respect. We are men of the future, united in a common destiny. Remember, above all else, act with dignity. Stop, Summit, Missouri. Ten minutes stop in Summit, Missouri. With their dignity somewhat bruised, Sam and Bill headed into town and straight for the assayer's office to determine the true value of their recent purchase, the beefsteak mine. Ah, oh, the assayer's office. Wait right here, Bill. Okay, we'll see you next week then. Good day to you, sir. Good day, sir. My partner and I recently ran into some good fortune and acquired a deed to a mine in this area. We would like to know both the location and the mine's relative worth. Here you are, sir, the deed to the beefsteak mine. <coughs> Uh, just a moment, uh, sir. I want to consult with my fellow experts. with our last three dollars is worth squat. Squat? Wow. How much is that, Sam? <laughs> well, I, I guess we'll just have to seek an alternate source of revenue. When Agnes Christina McCann met Ambrose Dorset, he was what people politely called a man of opportunity. Others called him a cheap swindler, a con man, and a no good this or that. But Agnes set out to make an honest man of him, and that she did. Now he owns most of the town. Get a horse, Mr. Dorset! Yes, dear. Andrew, desist. Now, it wasn't that Andy Dorset was a bad kid, exactly. But Mr. Dorset always had his nose in a ledger or somebody else's business, being the town banker and all. And Agnes, of course, was the county's leading advocate of the arts. And that took up most of her time. So Andy sort of ran free. Take care of that 
Can't you boys stay on those horses? Mrs. Dorset? Hmm. Four prints to the house, please. Ambrose, we'll frame that and hang it in your den, dear. Fine. I'm gonna go play. Oh, Andrew, don't be long. Hey, young Dorset. Your day's coming, kid. Better watch your step. That was Andy. Picture without the boy, folks? Oh, very nice. And he was a talker. People have been known to jump into the town well rather than engage in a conversation with Andy. Howdy! Howdy, Mr. Hooper. Did I ever tell you about the time yeah, I caught a... I, I can't talk right now, Andy. Uh, my pet duck died. He drowned. He'd been ailing anyway. I got, I got to go have my lunch. But, Mr. Hooper, it's only 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, you know, I had an early breakfast, up all night, what with grieving and all. You say hello to your father. But, Mr. Hooper. Repent in the Lord. 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 Hey, Sam, I got an idea. Oh, be still, my heart. What if we kidnapped the son of that distinguished family and hid him in our mind? We could ask his father for a lot of money to get him back. His father would give us a fortune, we'd give him the boy back, and everybody would live happily ever after. Say that again. Well, um... What if that extinguished family had a little boy with fortune? We could hide it in our mind and ask his father to give it back. His father would kidnap the son, ask us for a lot of money, and everybody would live happily ever after. You know, that's a good idea. Come, William. We have fish to fry. Sam? Sam, when did we go fishing? <laughs> Now, do you hear me? Andrew! You take those skates off and get in here this instant. My nuts. This instant. Just what do you think you're doing, young man? I'm surrounding a wagon train. Oh, I'm making them beg for mercy. What did I tell you about skating? Oh, you didn't say I couldn't skate inside the house. Where's the other skate? I lost it. Oh, oh. Practice the piano. I don't want to. Andrew, put that dreadful magazine away. The piano, now. Oh, not now, Andrew. I'm working. Gee, all the other kids pops up time to listen to them when they're working. Oh, except Jimmy Haskells, who's the undertaker. He can't really stop working when he's working because the body won't keep. Everything about having a dead body in the house, I think it'd be kind of neat. I bet it would smell like a rotten apple. I a rotten apple once, and I threw up all over Susie McPherson at school. That she hit me. I didn't think it was fair. Of course, it was the rotten apple's fault. Of course, it wouldn't bother you if you were working on a dead body, but you're not. Everything about having a dead body in the house, I think it'd be kind of neat. We have a dog, but he's not dead. Just lazy. Okay, okay. What is it? It says here the Buffalo Bills Wild West is going to be playing at the Capital City next week. Huh. Really? Yeah, and there's going to be cowboys and Indians and start suiting and steer open, and Annie Oakley herself's going to be there. Let me see that. Annie Oakley herself, huh? Yeah, and if we take Lee Horse's carriage, we could be there in an hour. Most certainly will not. That sort of entertainment is for hooligans, isn't it, Ambrose? Yes, indeed. Hooligans really love this sort of thing, and we wouldn't want to lower ourselves to that level. Exactly, Andrew.
Here's your tea, dear. Oh, thank you. Horge, 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 horge. Boon with me, mag and morn Oh, yes, Miss Dupa. That'll be fine. Thank you. Dorny, dorny, dorny. You are doing so beautifully with your English, Miss Dupa. Isn't she doing beautifully, dear? Yes, dear, beautifully. Ah, oh, pushy, pushy, pushy. <laughs> Miss Parton, dwap, dwap. <laughs> Can you believe she's only been speaking English for three years? Absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> I just love that laugh. It's so musical. So bell-like, don't you think, Ambrose? Like a donkey in heat, my pet. What did you say, dear? I said, on key and sweet, my pet. Oh, well, I... oh, uh, that'll be all, Miss Dupa. Thank you. Okay, doggy. Andrew, why am I paying for lessons when you refuse to practice like a civilized young adult? Mm, is that some sort of trick question? Oh. No. Come on. Ambrose, will you talk to this boy? Coming, dear. <laughs> Gee, Pop, I didn't know you did tricks on skates. Ambrose, are you hurt? Oh, no, dear. You won't mind if I linger here for a moment, will you? The ceiling's fascinating from this angle. I've been looking all over the house for this. Thanks, Pop. That's all right. Think nothing of it. Glad to be of service. Ooh. Ambrose. Yes, my little apple blossom. <clears throat> Something amiss, dear? As if you didn't know. Really, I have no idea. Is it the humidity? The barber says we're due for some rain soon. You can feel it in his big toe. Can you imagine that? What a talented digit he has. Go ahead, avoid the subject. Well, we could use the ring. It's your son. My son? I thought we agreed to share him. Sometimes I think people don't like him. Everyone in town knows he tells stories. You want him to be cultured, don't you? Yes, dear. And you want to be proud of him, don't you? Yes, dear, proud as a peacock, dear. And you don't want him to grow up the way you grew up, do you? No. You do remember how horrible your life was before I was around to shape it? Yes, dear. I dread it every day, dear. <laughs> what would you call your life before I met you? Fun. <gasps> what? None. I had no life until I met you, my little angel. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll talk to the boy. Yes, dear. And you'll straighten him out. Yes, dear. There's just one more thing, dear. The gypsies are back. Well, we agreed that was all right. They sharpen the knives and the tools. They're very helpful. Well, yes, I, I know, dear, but they were wailing and crying all through the night. Apparently, they lost something. Well, what did they lose? Well, I don't know, but they were very upset. They were still looking this morning. Dearest, I shall pray that they find it. Andrew? Are you scared? While Agnes and Ambrose waged their never-ending war with their ambunctious Andy, actually it was more what they call a holding action, Sam was busy setting his ambitious plan into motion. Excuse me! Can you direct my associate and myself to the door set the domicile? Yes. See the courthouse. Right behind the courthouse is the Presbyterian Church. Uh -huh. That's their street. Oh, yes. oh, you can't miss their place. It's as big as a house. Their house is as big as a house. Well, that's very succinct. Thank you, madam. There's a perfect matrimonial prospect for you, my dear Bill. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I'm off to see my psychic, dearest. Well, tell her I send my best. Although she probably knows that already. Eating grubby food now. Ambrose, Miss Dupa says your lunch is ready, for goodness sake. Don't you understand English? I do when I hear it spoken, my little porcupine. Now, dear, we've been through this before. All respectable families have European servants. Do you know what it's like not to be able to tell whether your food is flora or fauna or something in between? Ambrose, it's well known that Romanians have a way with meat. Besides, she's very thrifty. Our grocery bill's fallen considerably since she came to us. 
eating grubby food now. I called or at. Kiss, kiss. Miss Dupa. I am as you dorset. What cut of meat is this? Cut meat. Yes, cut of meat. Hmm. Ah! Oh. No, 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 no. Um, meat. Uh, uh, meat. Uh. Meat. Uh, meat. Uh. Yes, what kind of animal is this meat? Moo? Moo. Oink, oink, oink. <laughs> naughty, naughty, naughty. Cock a doodle doo! Cock a doodle doo! Cock a doodle doo! Cock a doodle doo! <laughs> I give up. Oh. That'll be all, Miss Dupa. I just hope it wasn't named Fido or Rover. <laughs> or mittens. Or boots. What is Fluffy? Fluffy the cat. They think it's their cat, Pa. Like silly monkeys in a bell. Don't say. No! All right, my little pyromaniac, I've reached my limit. Bad manners, I'll tolerate. Appalling clamor, I'll tolerate. Atrocious behavior of all kinds I'll tolerate. I'll even tolerate abominable and sundry bathroom noises, but I draw the line at conflagration. White man trespasses on Red Seat's land at his own peril. You've gone one step too far this time, little chief run amok. Well, you better not take one step further, Pop. Oh, really? And what will happen? <laughs> Get me down! Oh! Gee, Bob, you look neat upside down! Get me down! Get me down! Sir? Get me down this instant! Okay, Bob. No, no! And it, oh! Oh! Ah! Boy, that must have hurt landing on your head like that. Uh, 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 formidable. Formidable. I think we better arm ourselves. Get in the house. I won't. You can't make me. I'll engage in no further debate. Your mother will deal with you. Look forward to many months alone in your room. Endless hours at the piano. Countless weeks conjugating verbs. You don't care about me anyway. You wouldn't care if I died. If I went and dunked in the ocean, you wouldn't care. I'm not allowed to have any fun. Nobody listens to anything I say. Nobody has time to play with me. Everybody's always busy. All I get is, no, you can't do this. No, you can't do that. You don't even know I'm around except when I'm in trouble. You'll miss me when I get stolen during a raid. I'm running away. I'll probably get kidnapped by Mongolian hordes. And then you'll be Mongolian sorry. Mongolian hordes? There never is a good Mongolian horde around when you need one. <laughs> hey, P. 
feet. Want to talk? Hey! Red Rover, Red Rover, send Andy right over. Oh, can I play Sam? Huh? Never mind. Hide the sack. What are you doing? You said to hide the sack. Behind your back. Well, my good fellow, how are we today? Who's we, Fatso, and what do you guys want? Uh, we want you to get into this sack, okay? What? Uh, we'd like to hit the sack. Perhaps you can direct us to the nearest hotel. My folks don't like me talking to strange people, and he's pretty strange. Uh, yes, well, uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Samuel Howard, and this is my associate, William Driscoll. And you are? In a hurry, so buzz off. G get him in the sack, in the sack. <laughs> now listen here. <laughs> and there I am, Sheriff T-Bone Slim Yankum and my trusty but none too bright deputy, Muldoon. He's come to talk. I can see it in his eyes. What's up, Andy? No time to talk, Sarah. No time to talk? Darn the luck. They're after me. Who's after you? The kidnappers. Kidnappers, eh? Well, what kind are they today? Apache? Sioux? Crow? I'm not telling you stories, here. Honest, you guys are after me. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you try and circle back home, and I'll keep an eye out for them. Promise? Promise. <laughs> Well, why don't you take your shoes off? Why would I want to take my shoes off? Well, that's what I do when my feet hurt. My feet don't hurt. You just said they did. No, I didn't. Sam, you most certainly did. You said they were in agony. But not my feet. The feet, the agony of the feet. Well, those are the feet. They're your feet, and if they hurt, then that's agony, Sam. My feet don't hurt. Then whose feet hurt? Give me one good reason not to kill you. Because the kid's right across the street. <laughs> You go that way. I'll go this way. Sam, are you leaving me? Why? It's called heading them off. We don't want his head off, Sam. We want it in the sack. Oh, my goodness, the sack. I forgot the sack. Sam, please let me go with you. Oh, for heaven's sake, come on. <laughs> What do we do? He blocked our path. Oh, oh. We got him. Oh, ow, ow. Oh, oh. We, we don't got him. There's no time to fall down on the job. Hello, dear. How was the psychic? She wasn't there. She was run over by a horse this morning. Huh. You'd think she would have seen that coming. Where's Andrew? Oh, well, dear, we need to talk. I, I didn't see him around. Oh, well, you know how boys are. He probably just wandered off to do a little exploring. Well, how long's he been gone? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, we don't want to kill you. Oh, oh, I'm too, too. 
That was quite a chase you gave us there. Yeah, and it was pretty fun. So, you guys want to torture me? Rip out my tongue so I don't talk to the law? Of course not. We just want to kidnap you and hold you for ransom. What's a ransom? It's like this. We take you away and write your parents saying that we'll give you back if they pay us for you. Isn't that dishonest? Well, it depends on how you look at it. You don't get hurt. The parents have plenty of money, and all they have to do is share some with us. Right. And when the family's as exhausted as yours, everybody lives happily ever after. Uh -huh. What do I do when I'm kidnapped? Anything you want to. I can play? Certainly. Bill here loves to play. And we have this big old abandoned mine all picked out. It's way up in the hills. My bed a long time ago was even used by Indians as a sort of cave. Real Indians? <sighs> yep. Fierce ones, too, I bet. Warriors, braves, chiefs. Wow! Oh, sure. But now that you've found us out and have escaped from us, I guess we can't take you there. How come? Well, you obviously don't want to be kidnapped. Let me get this straight. If I get kidnapped, you'll take me to an Indian mine where I can play whatever I want until I have to go home. Exactly. So this is all just a big game? The best game. White man does not speak with forked tongue. Sam speaks the truth. Bill here? Well, what does it matter? Red Sea Fogo with white brothers. Snake Eye speaks well. That old Hank has an honest face. The name's Bill. You're ruining everything. Oh. That's right, old Hank. We must listen to the great Red Chief. Okay, okay. We will live in peace unless Pale Face goes back on word. Then Red Chief will be forced to scalp white brothers while they sleep. This is going to be a piece of cake. Deal? A deal. A deal? A deal. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm worried about Andrew. I think you were entirely too harsh with him. I'm sure he's fine just playing. Boys will do that. But it's not like Andrew to miss his piano practice. Uh-huh. I think we should go to the sheriff. Now, dear, there's no need to involve the sheriff in all this. I'm sure the boy is all right. Then I'm going to look for him. Very well. Goodbye, dear. Well. Red Chief, here's your new home. You like it? It looks swell. A little sprucing up, and it'll be fit for our mighty chief. Oh, running water. Looks better than that hotel we stayed at in Pe Pe Peoria, Sam. We're in luck, Bill. Old Hank. <laughs> yes, we're in luck, old Hank. There are tools here, some supplies, too. Oh, good, I'm starving, Snakey. Snake Eye. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. You hang these and light the others, and then you and Red Chief <clears throat> unpack the grub while I check to see if we will follow. Good thinking. I bet it's not me. He's hiding. Oh, well, thank you so much for that invaluable information. Did you throw this axe? That's not an axe. That's Red Chief's tomahawk. Red Chief uses it to hunt and fight pony soldiers. Not anymore, Red Chief doesn't. Sam, I, I, I mean Snake Eyes, will use it to cut wood for lunch. Got it? White man speaks well. Red Chief says, okay. Look, oh, his father better be loaded. Ooh, spooky. Old Hank. Hmm? 
Do you think there's any ghost in this mine? Ooh, don't say that. I hate ghosts. This could have been a fire. This ghost could be a scab ghost, all covered in slimy, gooey scab. Ooh, I need to grab you and hug you and scab you to death. Ooh, yeah, don't say that, Red Chief. I hate scabs. Look out! There's ghost slime on that rock behind you. Oh, no! Stop it! I hate ghost slime. I hate those slimes, I hate scabs, and I hate ghosts. What do you think of spiders? Ooh, I hate spiders. Well, that's too bad, because you got one on your head. No, 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 It's not a spider. Tell me it's not a spider. Um, 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 maybe it's a cat. Well, unless a cat has eight legs, that's a spider. Well, get it off me! Get it off me! Well, say get off! Say get off! <laughs> you little right here, 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 Is it gone? Nope, it's still there, but it's moving. Ah, get it off me, get it off me, please. Ow. Knock it off. Knock it off with what? Anything. Anything? Please hurry, hurry. He concussed me. What did you do? He had a spider on his head. Oh, yeah. Is it gone? Oh. You should save that. Miss oh. Dupe has a way with meat. Oh. Uh. Oh. How many fingers? February. Well, close enough. Now go outside and keep watching. I'll look after the kid. Red sheep. Yeah, well, red sheep better be good. Now he's dealing with a snake eye. Red Chief's always good. Red Chief's a noble warrior. Yeah, well, just stand there. Don't move, don't think, don't play, don't breathe. Just stand there. Can I talk? Well, I guess a little talk couldn't hurt. Now, I guess it's sort of unusual for the town mailman to be the town gossip. But when you think about it, he does visit every house every day, so it sort of makes sense. Under your hosen. Anyway, mailman Higgins was the town gossip, and he loved his job. Howdy, Miss Dupa. Oh, howdy, well, here's the mail. <laughs> wow, this is some house. Oh, I, I, I bumped into Mrs. D. She said uh, Andy wandered off, huh? Oh, no, sir. He bubby. He didn't wander off? Well, what happened? Something wrong with him? What? What? Oh, he's constipated. Okay, starts with letter I. No, 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 no. Uh, big, hardy, ganga, Mongolian horse. He was kidnapped by a Mongolian horse? No, no, no. Uh, Mongo, ganga, kidnapped. He was kidnapped by a Mongolian horse with a mustache. Wow. Wait till I tell the guys back at the office. Bye, Miss Dupa. Yahoo, blood them. Like I told you before, Andy Dorset was a talker. Rumor has it he wants to talk to pet parrot to death. They found the poor critter hanging by his claws upside down on his perch, blood trickling from his ears. So you can imagine the poor kidnapper's state of mind after an hour alone with Andy, on, talking, talking, you, talking. Body, but you're not. I wonder if anybody's ever ridden a gopher. I guess not. You need a red going into holes. I don't like girls. You shouldn't try to catch frogs unless you use a string. You see, burps. My horse is round. You got me beds to sleep on in this cave. Sometimes my dad lets me ride a pony. Not like horses, only shorter. I never got hit with a booger, but Mary Allen once swung one at City Block. She just doesn't feel any road today. People can play piano. Why can't pianos play people? This is big rough. I like this fun. I never camped out before, but I can't hear it once. Whoa. Are there any real Indians in these woods anymore? Can I smell beans and just a tree going like a windblow? I always wondered about that. We have a dog named Attila, and he had five puppies. I never camped out before, but I almost had five fun? once. That <laughs> was my last birthday. What makes your nose so red, Hank? Do they have woods where you come from? They ride roses. Isn't that fun? You're a fat
Ladies, have you heard the news? The Dorset boy's missing. Really? He may have been kidnapped. Oh, oh no! Ladies, let us pray. Oh, oh crazy Jesus! Thank you, God! Thank, thank you, God! Thank you, Lord! Jesus! Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, 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 silence! Silence! Oh, bless! Bless! Maybe I'll never have to hear another spoken word. Oh, rapture. Call me a bear bear then, huh? Red Chief! Is white man speaking to me? Yes, he is. We need to have a little talk, Red Chief. Sir Snake Eye, did you know that my grandfather had a gold tooth? He got one from riding on a... a poor choice of words. Allow me to rephrase. I will talk. All right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, do you like it at home, Red Chief? It's okay. I don't have any fun at home. I hate to go to school. I like to camp out. Mm -hmm. I am Brant, Sam. Oh, oh. No, 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 no. You're, you're I'm a brat. <sighs> why do you say that, Reggie? My dad thinks I'm a brat. That's why he won't play with me or talk to me much. Oh. No, Red Chief, your dad doesn't think that. He's just busy. You're not a brat. You're just imaginative, energetic, clever. Really? Oh, absolutely. But I don't have to go home right away. Do I see him? Snake Eye. Do I snake eyes? No, not right away. We'll stay here in the cave a little while. Great! I never had so much fun in my life. <laughs> Why don't you run along and see if there's any pony soldiers out there spying on us? But don't stray too far from the cave. The woods can be a dangerous place for lone braves. You betcha! Red Chief keeps eyes peeled for pony soldiers. What an amazing little fellow. Well, it'll all be worth it. Now the mountain will come to Mohammed. The mountain will come to Mohammed? Uh huh. How's it going to do that? Got tiny little mountain feet? <laughs> <laughs> well, we did it, old Hank. A perfectly executed caper down to the last minute detail. Every tiny contingency considered. Every possible angle dealt with. I mean, all we have to do now is sit here and wait for the ransom money. <laughs> 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 believe his father didn't send any money. We planned this kidnapping thoroughly. Well, maybe the mountain didn't see Muhammad. I mean, the mountains are huge, and Muhammad, he could be just itty bitty little thing. I mean, it would be... Let's reevaluate the plan. We picked a very wealthy land. Mm -hmm. We kidnap him. Uh -huh. We bring him to a secluded spot. Mm -hmm. We wait for the ransom money. Mm. What could be wrong? Uh, I don't know. Let me think a minute. I mean, we were playing this so meticulously. What could it possibly be? Uh, did we write a ransom note? <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Well, <laughs> 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 It'd be terrible if we didn't. <laughs> oh.
I was waiting for you to notice that. You were? Of course. Why do you think I staged this elaborate test? It was a test. <laughs> Congratulations. Why? You've just been promoted to kidnapper first class. Well. <laughs> Mr. Dorset, we have kidnapped your son, Andrew, the little blonde headed. No, no, no. no. Uh, the three D is headed. Uh, uh, headed boy. We will return him to you unharmed if you meet our demands. Give us money in the amount of. How much do you think we should ask for? Well, he's a millionaire, isn't he? Right. Give us money in the amount of fifty dollars. You think that's too much? I don't know, Stan. That seems like an awful lot. How about uh, forty-seven dollars and fifty cents? Oh, now don't forget to don't forget to punctuate, Sam. Oh, uh, uh, dot your T's and cross your eyes. Okay. Give it to a messenger who will not be me <clears throat> at the old hamstrung bridge. Yours sincerely, the fierce and desperate kidnappers. Period. <laughs> poetry. Sheer poetry. And you get an A for penmanship. Thank you. Sess the assist away. Sam, Sam, where are you going? To the next town over. I want to see if news of the kidnapping has spread. Then I'll hire a messenger to bring the note to Dorset, someone who is totally ignorant of the crime. What's the matter? Sam, when you need somebody ignorant, you usually pick me. Oh, well, you're too important for this mission, Bill. You're going to stay here, well, boy. No, Sam! Sam! Sam, please don't leave me! Uh, no, no. There ain't rope around here. No, there's no rope. No, 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 this is not a good game to play. Yes, it is. No, no, no. Onward, on the ball. Good day, man. That a boy. That a boy. On the ball. Oh. Good afternoon, my dear sirs. Howdy. It certainly is good for a gentleman such as myself to find himself in the heartland again. Fistfights, shootings, hooliganism, kidnappings. Back here, those things are unheard of. Yeah, well, I'm not so sure of that. Oh, yeah. In Summit, the town down the road, there's quite the commotion going on there. Oh, you don't say. Little uh, Dorset boy, he was kidnapped. The way I hear it, it was either a two-headed Mongolian horse or one Mongolian horse with a mustache. Either way, it's not a pretty picture. I indeed not. I shall endeavor to keep my eyes peeled for the lad as I wander down life's highway. You do that. Some dude. Sits a mule pretty good, though. <clears throat> good day, sir. What's so good about it? It's a figure of speech. One day's the same as the next, if you ask me. You live through enough of them and you die. That's all she wrote. Watch the dog, he bites. That's <laughs> <laughs> not a dog. Of course it's a dog. What's the matter with you? Oh, <clears throat> say, <clears throat> do you know where the town of Summit is. Of course I do. Wait, do I look like an idiot to you? Well, Summit's three miles down the road. Then why don't you go there right now? Well, I was wondering if you'd do me a favor. Not likely. There's a dollar in it for you. Ah, uh, now you're talking about. This ain't no dollar. No, it's a letter I would like you to deliver. 
Do you know an Ambrose Dorset? Everyone knows Dorset, richest man in the county. Well, I'll pay you a dollar to deliver that letter to him. Give me the dollar. Now, you'll make sure to deliver it to Ambrose Dorset and nobody else. I ain't deaf, you agent. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I know I can trust you. You have an honest face. I can, the ham. I said I'd deliver the letter and I'll deliver it. Thank you. Good day. Let's go, Rover. <laughs> Heel, Rover. I said, Heel, Rover. Rover. Heel. Well, what kind of sin I dog are you anyway? I got Jim. I'm gonna get my money back from that sucker. I saw him not two hours ago, ma'am. He was playing one of his little games again, you know, his tall tales. My son does not fabricate tall tales. No, ma'am. But he sure does spin a good yarn. I don't think he's been kidnapped. Well, the town obviously thinks so. That's just wishful thinking, ma'am. Oh! What exactly did Andrew say when you saw him? That he was being pursued by Indians out to kidnap him. Ambrose, you see, he's been abducted by savages. The only savages in this town are picketing the saloon. That old Mrs. Greavy is the ringleader. You know, I saw her punch a horse unconscious once. Granted, it was an old horse, but still it went down like a ton of bricks. To this day, I have nightmares. Ambrose, be constructive. Yes, dear. Sheriff, <clears throat> you'll keep an eye out for the boy, won't you? Yeah. I'm sure he's just out having fun and has lost track of time, but having a wife yourself. She's dead. Ah. Indeed. But you must remember what it was like having her around, don't you? Mercifully, I put all that behind me. Well, in any event, I'm sure he's just playing a prank on us. How can you be so sure? Well, I mean, let's be logical about this. If he had been kidnapped, we would have gotten a ransom note, wouldn't we? And did you get one? No, we didn't get one. Are you sure? Let me emphatically state, dear sir, that I have received no note. I have traveled the four corners of the globe, and I know what a ransom note looks like. They come in all shapes and sizes, you know. I have received no note. Big or small, triangle or rectangle, oval or octagon. Well, it could be hexagonal. Listen, why don't you folks go over to the restaurant and have a sarsaparilla? I'll send a few men out to sniff around. My dear. Take care of that, will you, Muldoon? I saw your men sniffing around, Sheriff. And we found no sign of them, sir. Well, maybe. Now, I don't mean to tell you your job, but maybe you could try sniffing around with a dog. A dog? A dog? What a great idea. Dogs smell really good. What's your dog doing? He's sleeping in my chair. Why? Well, Attila's a dog. He can sniff out Andy's scent probably better than our man. That's a brilliant conclusion. Well, I thought so, too, but thanks for saying. You, and we'll need a piece of Andy's clothing. Thanks, sir. A dog. Hey, you! What do you want? Oh, oh, oh. Whoa! Didn't I give you a letter to deliver? I'm working on it. Give me back my letter. You never said when you wanted to deliver. Young people today, they're always in a hurry. Ha, ha. Now, 
Give me back my dog. In your dreams, you paid me fair and square. I paid you to deliver that letter. It's not my fault you changed your mind. Give me my dollar. No. Give me no, back no. my dollar. Give me my Rover, sit. <laughs> Good dog. That's what I paid for. That dog is vicious. And I'll be locked up. I'm not in the mood! Come on! All right, you trackers. Watch a real tracker at work. Go find Andy. Find him, boy. <coughs> no, he ain't got the scent yet. Go find Andy. Oh, watch him, he's good. <laughs> he's just digesting the facts. Go find Andy. I know I can trust you to deliver this letter. You have an honest face. Not a problem, Sonny. I like your dress. And there's this for a worthy charity. Out of the way, Bob! There's work to do! It's a sign. is not a jack, folks. This is not a queen or even a king. What we have here is an ace. He's just listening, folks. See? He's got his ear to the ground. Don't disturb him. Let him work. I told you. What a no Now hold it! Don't spook him. He'll flush him out. Just, just let him do his job. This is a professional at work. I have to read it first, madam. I mean, your madamness. Forty-seven fifty. Why, that little hangnail. Thinks he can pull one over on his old man, does he? Look at this barbarian scrawl. Did he really think anyone would believe an adult wrote this? Hooking up with a flim flam man. Oh, oh, sorry. Flim flam woman. Ha! Sending a stooge with his little note. Well, I'll teach that little upstart. You can't flim flam a flim flam man. And in my day, I was the best. Here you are. A reply to end all replies. And you can tell your little cronies I mean it, too. I won't back down. I'm a man of courage. Why, in the Civil War, I fought on both sides. In fact, at the Battle of Chimichanga, I actually shot myself. 
So, if you think I'm taken in by this piteous excuse for a disguise, think again, sir! <laughs> Never an exorcist around when you need one. Just lucky the news broke. No, no. I mean, the kid's father. What about him? Listen to what he wrote. Dear fierce and desperate kidnappers. That's us, Sam. Yes, I know it's us. I received your letter today in regard to the ransom you asked for the return of my son. I think you are a little high in your demand. I told you we were asking for too yes. much. And I hereby make you a counter proposition, which I am inclined to believe you will accept. You bring Andy home and pay me $250 in cash. What? And I agree to take him off your hands. You had better come at night, for the neighbors believe he is lost, and I couldn't be responsible for what they would do to anybody they saw bringing him back. Respectfully, Ambrose Dorset. $250? We've only got 37 cents left, Sam. <sighs> he mustn't realize what a spirited and smart little fellow Red Chief is. We owe him $268, Sam. Tisk, tisk. That can't be right. Tisk. This is very puzzling. Mm. Why, Red Chief is a diamond in the rough. Installments. We could pay in installments. By chimney. On behalf of Red Chief, I take umbrage to his father's tone. What would you want with his umbrella? What are you talking about? Sam, you just said you were going to take his umbrella. I did not say I was going to take his umbrella. Well, don't have a hissy fit. I am not having a hissy fit. And now you're having a hissy fit about having a hissy fit. If defending the worth of a young man to an uncaring father is interpreted as having a hissy fit, then I, the accused, declare myself guilty. That'll be $20 or 20 days. But, oh, Your Honor, I swear I didn't know she was married. <laughs> Got you that time, Sam. Got that out. Yeah, all right. Uh, uh, Sam, can we please give Red Chief back soon? I'm starting to get sore in places I never even knew I had. <sighs> you leave everything <sighs> to me. You keep an eye on the kid. I'm going into Summit and see if I can straighten out this entire misunderstanding. Don't leave me alone with him again, Sam. Where is the kid, anyhow? He went scouting. Well, don't let him stay too far. The sun will be coming down soon, and we don't want him to hurt himself in the dark. Don't leave me alone with the kid in the dark, Sam! Sam! Red Chief? Red Chief! Now, folks, you shouldn't think that Ambrose didn't care about Andy. He was just convinced that the boy was pulling a prank. But I was about to bring him some news that would change his mind. Ah, Sheriff. There's still no sign of the boy, Mr. Dorset. And I'm beginning to worry. Uh, you see, I got this telegram. I've been meaning to talk to you about that, Sheriff. Please, sit down. Oh, well, thank you. Sheriff, I think this whole thing is a sham. Come again? Andy wanted to go see Buffalo Bill's Wild West show, and I said no. And I overheard him talking, and well, I think he staged his own kidnapping. <laughs> well, I certainly hope you're right. Sure would put my mind to ease. Well, I think I know my own son, and 
enterprising young lad that he is, I think he's hired an accomplice to help carry out this charade. <laughs> <laughs> On a certain level, you have to admire the little stinker. Boy, I sure hope you're right. I know he's a clever little guy, and if you say he's okay, then I suppose I can't say otherwise. Uh, of course he's okay. Well, why? Why wouldn't you think he was okay when I just told you that he was? Well, see, I just got this telegram. And it seems that two killers, Filthy McNasty and Strange Pierre, escaped from the capital city jail yesterday. They're armed and dangerous. Killers? They've been known to kidnap a citizen or two and hold them for ransom. And they've been quite successful, too, even though their ransom notes are pretty bad. Filthy? Filthy McNasty. The guy's got the brains of a rock, but he's built like a mountain. And that strange Pierre, he's a master of disguise. Is he ever dressed as a nun? Well, now I wouldn't put it past him. You know, he once rustled a circus elephant disguised as a peanut. A nun just brought me a ransom note. Probably a friend of Andy's, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I gave her a note back. Believe me, I put her in her place. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking? A good meal. No, ransom. Oh, ransom. It's all my fault. I should have known Andy wasn't capable of such a despicable deed. <laughs> Even he can't lie that well. Although, looking back, I can see just how impressive his imagination and sense of life really are. He has fun doing anything, everything. How I envy the lad. His is a life of fun and frolic. And there's never the threat of jail. <laughs> I never should have told him he couldn't go see that silly show. Oh, dear. I should have paid more attention to the Miss little Dupa, dyke. More nerve tonic, with please. Rough house with him. Thank you. It's what my father did with me, but no. I had to work all the time, put up a good front for the town. Well, that's all done with. I'm going to go out and I'm going to find our son and I'm going to bring him home. And when I do, he's going to act like a regular boy and I'm going to act like a regular dad. If that's all right with you, dear. Oh, Ambrose, hearing you take charge like this reminds me of the man I married. His name was Ambrose Dorset, too. It still is, dear. It's me. <laughs> Oh, Ambrose, I tried to turn you into something you were never meant to be. You weren't meant to be a banker, respectable citizen, someone the entire town could look up to, someone solid, a role model for children. I get the point, A dear. paragon of virtue, a stand-up kind of a guy. Okay, okay, I get it. I get it. Oh, Ambrose. I love you so. Oh. Mm. Mm. Oh, I love you too, dear. And we both love Andy. So let's get him back and show him how we feel. I shall go undercover into the bowels of the dregs of society. 
I shall delve into my bag of tricks and slip unnoticed into the town's criminal element. I will pound the soft, white belly of the grapevine for news of these escaped lunatics' whereabouts. Criminals always know where the other criminals stay. It's the unwritten code of scum. Oh, won't that be dangerous? Nonsense, my dear. I shall go back to my old ways. I shall become, once again, a practicing thespian. Thespian? But that's illegal in these parts. In fact, well, I don't see how you can become one of those at all. Or why? Actor. I'm going to become an actor again. Oh. <laughs> I shall go out into the night and mingle with those who loiter in life's back alleys. Thieves, lowlifes, lawyers. I shall go disguised as Blind Pew from Mr. Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island, a role I once essayed to glowing reviews. <laughs> Mr. Dorset's blind pew amounts to petty larceny, rave New Jersey's Newark starlet. Oh, Ambrose, you're my hero. <laughs> you might want to cut down on the nerve tonic a bit, dear. Don't get up. I know where my costumes are stored. Strange Pierre was born in Talladega, Alabama. For some reason, he thought he was French. Probably the first French redneck in history. Nobody knew where McNasty came from. Story was he sprang full grown from a witch's butt. Why, yes, we're part of the ransom game. The other pals asked us to take over. Now tell us more about your rich daddy again. Well, he's the richest man in Summit. You know where that is? Oh, yes. It's but a hop to the jump from here. Well, he's the richest man there. Probably the richest man in the county. Why don't you tell us more about this ransom game, Mr. Red Chief? Hurry right back, <laughs> Sam. Stop. Your name has officially been changed to Leadfoot! <laughs> Mr. Dorset was mighty proud of his pirate disguise. How he described it was absolutely beyond detection. Ahoy me! Oh, good evening, Mr. Dorset. Any uh, news about Andrew yet? Uh, no. I'm not a peep. But, um, thanks for asking. <laughs> Well, now I'll tell you what. The sun's about to come up, and I'm getting tired of this. Why don't you just lead us to your papa, small fry? Red Chief doesn't budge for the white men. If Red Chief don't budge now, He's never going to budge again, ever. But the story had sort of grown in his mind. It's getting more and more dangerous around here. I saw some pirates in town. A whole shipload of them. That's it. Where are you going, Pete? I'm going home to get my shotgun. This town's going to Hades in a handbasket, and I'm not just going to watch it happen. I'm personally going to kill that little brat. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
No one will recognize me in this disguise. The New York police can attest to that fact. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 careful of the uh, helium cylinder, dear. You'll turn me into a hot air balloon. <laughs> I shall be back shortly with our son. Now, I don't know about the unwritten coat of scum, as Ambrose described it, or exactly where the bowels of the dregs of society hang out in Summit, but Ambrose must have found them because he wasn't in town two minutes before he spotted a likely kidnapper. A kidnapper, if ever I saw one. Pretending he was a cat. What? Now the rumors were really flying. The town was getting riled up. The mailman had done his job. Any peg leg, one eyed pirate comes around here, he's gonna have no eyes and no legs. Excuse me, pal, but I'm looking for a couple of cons. Oh, try the state penitentiary. No, you don't get it. These cons are loose. Well, they're moles and no concern of mine. Now, excuse me, I have an appointment. Heading for this big house. Yes, I have to straighten out a misunderstanding. About a kidnapping? Uh, as a matter of fact, yeah. How did you know that? You go with me. What? You what are you doing? Me. Let go of me. Huh? Hey. What? Are you filthy or strange? That's rather personal. Kidnap my son, will you? Mr. Dawson. Where is he, you convict? I am not a convict. My name is Sam Howard. Of course you're a convict. There are two convicts loose in the woods, and they have Andy. My friend and I have two convicts. Dangerous convicts. I left Andy with my friend Bill. You mean strange Pierre? He's strange, but his name is Bill, and he's not a convict either. My little boy. My buddy. You're telling your story to the sheriff. Come on. Come on. What? Come on. We're going to what? see the sheriff. The sheriff? No, 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 no. We gotta no. get him over. Come, Come on. on. Now get in. It's a horse's no. carriage. No. Just get in. All right, now listen up, folks. We've got us a missing child here. No shipload of pirates, no Arabian Nights, and no Mongolian hordes. Well, let's just get ourselves together. Sheriff! 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 There's, a, there's an army of hunchbacks! They're on the moon! Oh, Calm down! Calm down! There's a lot of wild rumors flying around here tonight. Let's just stay calm until we can determine the facts. What was that? Sheriff! 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 Now don't you move. Sheriff! No! No! Sheriff! Ah, uh, Sheriff! No! It's me! Look, see. Time's for these guys to work. Step on the gas. Well, come on. The pedal. pedal. Step on the pedal. No, they're stealing Mr. Dorset's car. Don't let him get away. Oh! Can you lead me to Andy? Yes, sir. I'm gonna have to trust you. They're shooting at us. Oh no, kidding. What was your first clue? The noise. Insist. Stop with the shooting. Oh. Stop us now! <laughs> <laughs> 
Nice bite! Step on the brake! The brake and pedal! The pedal! The other pedal! Oh! Look at my beautiful automobile! Look at those guys! The guns and bullets! Was it Dorset? Was it Dorset? Putty, putty, horsey! Go walk on out of the Slow down! A uh, whiny horsey, go clobber, 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 yes. chasing party, hotty, kidnapping. No. Oh, no. Oh, Andrew. Andrew! Oh, I'm pooped. We're done for. I don't know the meaning of the word defeat. It means we're done for. Now, it's a little known fact, but right there in our tiny town of Summit, Missouri, began the world's first car chase scene. God forgive us. The horses! Get the horses! Stop! Stop! Hold it! I think we lost him. Say again! Pleased to meet you. They're not playing, are they? Uh-uh. Are we in trouble? Uh-huh. What are we gonna do? Help! Help! Don't be such a sissy boy. Look, I'm not the one wearing the beret. I'll spit in your general direction. Yeah? Well, I throw a rock in yours. Keep throwing at him. Help me. Grab every rock you can find. More. Rocks. No, never mind. Let's get out of here. Gizzard on a stick. At last, a good meal. No one's there. It's deserted. Shh. That's Andy. It's Bill. Hey, it's coming down from there in a ravine. Let her rip, Mr. Dorset. Hurry! Hurry! Wait, wait, Red Chief, what are you doing? Uh, 
Toward that crest. When you get to the top of it, you run like a goat boy's chasing after you and don't stop for nothing. What about you? No, don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Sam's gonna be here any minute now. I can feel it in my kidneys. No. Red Chief will fight to the death by old Hank's side. Uh, couldn't, couldn't we just fight to the slight injury? Whatever. <laughs> Over yonder! No, 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 this way! Oh. We meet again, old Hank. Halt, white men. It's time to talk turkey. What's the noise? It's a helium, the helium! This is Mr. Howard and Mr. Driscoll. We owe them a great debt. All right, hold it right there. Who are you guys? Are you all right, Mr. Dorsett? Fine. Come on, stand up with your hands in the air. Please don't shoot, Mr. Sheriff. Where are you going? Oh, no, no, no. Where are you going? No, no. Here are your comments, Mr. Sheriff, sir. Well, that's filthy McNasty and strange Pierre. But who are you two? Well, you see, uh, your lawless had all started back in St. Louis. We were both abandoned by our parents. Orphans uh, of the storm. Uh, yes, sir. Well, we met in an orphanage, actually. The, the, the sisters of... Of, uh, uh, of, the, of the dim hopes. Uh, yes, exactly. The dim hopes. Is this going to be a long story? Well, uh, you could tell them about Kokomo. You two are under arrest. No! No! Don't let him arrest oh. him, Bob! 
Put the cuffs away, Sheriff. These two men are old friends of mine. Haven't seen them in years. Decided to pay me a surprise visit. <laughs> yes, indeed. Imagine my astonishment when they turned up. Could have knocked me over with a feather. Well, if that's what you want, Mr. Dorset, it's fine with me. Good day, sir. Thank you, sir. Everybody, let's go home. Andrew, that was quite an adventure. Tell me all about it. It chased us, Mom. Were you scared? Me? Nah, but Bill was kind of scared. And that's the way our adventure ended, folks. Everyone was pretty pleased, like one big happy family. Oh, yeah. Our town of Summit got two new sterling citizens out of the deal, too. Come on, Moby. Lambs, hearts we bought were so gallant, we screaming. And the robins dead stairs, bonbons melting in hair, gave prunes to rat flight that our dragons are bare. Jose does that best strangle, hammers lie bleeding. Oh, the lambs, they are for free, and the bombs in the cave. And so, by the powers invested in me, I now pronounce you Deputy Sam and Deputy Bill. Oh. And because of conspicuous bravery at a time of grave danger, and by the powers invested in me... Said that. I I take great pride in presenting you with the key to our city. What's that? It's my key. I lost the big one. Uh, it's a small city. <laughs> uh, overwhelmed by this honor. Ditto. Smile. <laughs> Congratulations, men. Congratulations. Don't forget to look in on the old homestead while we're gone, huh? Consider it done. And done. Bye. Okay, Buffalo Bill, here we come. Yahoo! <laughs> yes, Yahoo! Quiet! You'll get the hang of it, dear. Just need a little practice. Peaky, peaky, Nikki. Beg your pardon? Peaky, peaky. It's a picnic for our trip, dear. Ah, indeed. Thank you, Miss Tupa. And. Your English is improving. <laughs> well, what culinary delights await us today? Sam, Phil, my stalwart friends, a little token of my esteem. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. 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 Rewards of a day well spent. Mr. Dorset! Mr. Dorset! Mr. Dorset! Mr. Dorset!